Chris Paul is known as the most hated player by other players. They have called him a cheater, a horrible teammate, and selfish. But why did he get elected as the president of the players union by players? twice. That is a really important position handling all of their contracts. If he's such a bad guy, why do they trust him? Well, it makes sense when you see how CP got his reputation. The Pelicans gave Phoenix a really tough series last year because of feisty players like Jose Alvarado. JTA bothered CP with pesky defense all series, so Chris got his revenge. Elbow to the jaw, and Jose was called for the foul. How about putting on the brakes and Jose runs into him like a brick wall? That was actually pretty funny. But after the series, Chris mispronounced Alvarado's name on purpose to disrespect him. Uh, Alvarado. Uh, 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 Alvarado. Alvarado. Well, this year, even though Alvarado was injured, he wanted payback. But CP3 knew about his injured ribs, so watch him just tap Jose's ribs right there before the layup. But the dirtiest play was after Zion threw down that 360 dunk, CP elbows Jose in the face, causing a big fight. But that beef is nothing compared to what he's done in the past. But first, the holidays are here and I am still having fun playing prize picks, especially because they are giving back to us with a different promo for each of the 12 days of Pixmas. From December 14th to Christmas Day, unwrap a new promo daily and play along with me this holiday season. So the promo is to make your picks and get a free entry to win cash. Today, I'm gonna go with Pascal Siakam because OG Ananobi is still out and Pascal has the highest usage rate on the team. And Julius Randle because he has been on an absolute tear. I'm gonna go more with both of their points projections and I'm gonna play 25 bucks and get entered to win 100. So download the Prize Picks app, use promo code AMHOOPS to get your deposit instantly matched up to 100 bucks start your picks miss season off with an added guest from prize picks his issues with demarcus cousins expose just how dirty of a player cp3 is it goes all the way back to his time in college when chris was being guarded by julius hodge cp couldn't handle a seven foot player so he decided to punch him in the crotch instead and when he faced Boogie in the league, he resulted to equally dirty tricks. All the way back in 2013, he tried one of the weakest flops of all time. Not only did that not work and was embarrassing, the NBA officially warned CP3, but in 2021, it did work. Chris pretends to get knocked down, but obviously flopped. Boogie got called for the foul, and all he could do was smile. But he called Chris out. I feel like it's basically cheating, and I don't respect a cheater. If that's your tactic to winning, I don't respect you. He hated CP3 so much, he refused to let his teammate Isaiah Thomas shake his hand after a game. I hate him. <laughs> Honestly, I do. I hate him. But most of the boogie Chris Paul stuff flew under the radar. Chris may have had a dirty reputation inside the league, but outside he's in commercials all the time. He's got like a nice family guy image in the public until Rajon Rondo exposed the truth to the world. In 2008, CP helped Team USA to win gold at the Olympics. Rondo couldn't even make the team, and he was insecure about his reputation as a player. But while Chris Paul's Hornets struggled, Rondo Celtics won a title. So after a game in 2009, Rondo went up to CP3 and said, I've got a ring. You're never gonna win one which is accurate, and they had to be separated. That led to CP disrespecting Rondo in the media. I think Rondo's a lucky guy to be able to play with a guy like Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, KG, Rasheed Wallace. It all came to a head in 2018 when Rondo's Lakers were playing CP's Rockets. They got in each other's face and Rondo appeared to spit at Chris Paul. So Chris put his hand on Rondo's face and punches were thrown. And Rondo knew people were gonna side with CP3 with his great reputation, so he got ahead of it. He told the media, everyone wants to believe Chris Paul's a good guy. They don't know. He is a horrible teammate. They don't know how he treats people. Then waves of ex-CP3 teammates backed up Rondo. Glenn Big Baby Davis said, CP3 is a very bad teammate. Ryan Holland said, yeah, everything that glitters ain't gold. And Nick Young, 
came out and said Chris would hold him hostage on the court. If Nick didn't do what CP wanted, he wouldn't pass to him. And he would say, yeah, you know I hold the keys to your next contract, so you better fall in line. That was such a big story in 2018. Everyone started to notice all the little dirty things about Chris Paul. His reputation got so bad, when Patrick Beverly pushed him in the back, everybody figured, well, he must have done something to deserve it. The most petty example ever. In 2019, he told the refs that Jordan Bell's jersey was untucked with one second left in a two-point game. You can see it on the right side of the screen. CB3 talking to the ref, pointing at Jordan Bell. That cheap move was called a technical foul on the Wolves. Everyone likes to mock CP and call him a snitch for that, but they all forget what happened next. This is key to why even though everyone hates Chris Paul, they voted him to be their president. OKC shot a technical free throw, making it a one point game. So when Cat made the free throw, it allowed Dennis Schroeder to catch a full court pass and lay it in to tie the game. And they won it in overtime. People hate Chris Paul, but most of his dirty plays are to win the game. This man will use his genius level basketball IQ to win at any cost. And that's exactly who you want representing you in negotiations. The best example of this is his famous rip through move. It's a cheap trick to draw a foul, but he's somehow still legal. If a defender puts his arm too close, Chris rips the ball up pretending to shoot and gets the call. Watch how uncomfortable JJ Redick is asking Chris about this. And you mean to tell me on the damn scouting report, it's not on there that I'm going to do the rip through? Whose fault is that? Like, at what point are we going to hold guys accountable for like knowing the game? You not thinking enough that what's well, not you want to get into the ball like that. Mm. That's my fault. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's my fault. Okay. All right. JJ Reddick's like, all right. I mean, if that's how you want to act, it's a dirty play, but you do you. Some people just don't have it in them to be that dirty. Like they're not gonna stoop down to that level to win. But CP3 will, and that is who you want on your side when you're negotiating against the owners. It's like hiring like the nastiest lawyer who's gonna pull all the cheap tricks in court because you just really wanna win. In 2016, Chris led the players during the last salary cap spike. The owners wanted to smooth out all the new money slowly, but CP3 made sure they got it all at once, which led to a huge salary increase for the players. He also got them a bigger revenue share, which is huge, a better pension plan, and health insurance that included benefits for mental health. He then took back the player's group name, image, and likeness rights, which led to huge business opportunities for the players. The ironic part is that his cutthroat approach just hasn't ever worked in the biggest games. Chris Paul has only been to one conference finals in his whole career, and he always flames out in the playoffs. All it really did was ruin his reputation throughout the league. Now, I'm not one of these people who says, oh, Chris Paul sucks. That's a really dumb take. But it is interesting that he has the record for losing playoff series when his team is up 2-0. No player has ever blown a 2-0 series lead five times. Most of that was because he had a crappy team around him. But not every time. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame with a reputation of being a dirty player. He did it to win at any cost, stooping to a level that most players would not. But the crappy part is, it didn't even work. And we will see if Chris Paul's sons are gonna upgrade here at the trade deadline because turns out the Pelicans might be better than them. We know for sure that Jay Crowder is on his way out. I did a full rundown of all the latest trade rumors right here. <laughs> 